Bienvenidos a la conferencia de prensa internacional de presentación de los nuevos, nuevos seres tridáctilos de Nazca, la prueba definitiva. La, la denominación exacto y oficial de estos nuevos cuerpos en adelante será los seres humanoides tridáctilos de Nazca y Palpa. El nombre de licenciado y periodista mexicano Jaime Maussan y del periodista e investigador peruano Joyce Mantilla, agradecemos la presencia de todos y cada uno de ustedes, a nuestros invitados especiales y a los distinguidos periodistas y reporteros de los medios de comunicación del Perú y de diferentes países del mundo que nos acompañan en esta, de manera presencial y virtual en esta conferencia de prensa internacional. Eh, soy Enrique Rodríguez, periodista e investigador, y tengo el honor de eh, recibir el encargo de los organizadores para presentar esta conferencia de prensa con los nuevos cuerpos didáctilos de Nazca y Palpa, que son de origen no humano y que sin lugar a dudas eh, van a marcar un acontecimiento histórico en, en la era de la humanidad. For Jaime Maussan y Jaime Joyce, Mantilla and Joyce Mantilla desean expresar su reconocimiento a los galardonados y distinguidos científicos, especialistas y profesionales and professionals. Eh, que han realizado en nuestro país in our country, eh, diferentes estudios e investigaciones a estos cuerpos to these bodies, eh, con el objetivo with the y la prioridad de acreditar y certificar of la composición orgánica, biológica, entre otras, de estos nuevos cuerpos tridáctilos de other issues. Expresamos también el público We agradecimiento a la Universidad Nacional de San Luis Gonzaga San Luis Gonzaga, Gonzaga, San Luis Gonzaga National University of Ica for its permanent support in the investigation de estos cuerpos of this body since the year 2017. Nuestra gratitud a la doctora We also Cecilia give much Uribe thanks to Dr. Quiroz, Cecilia Uribe Quiroz, rector, dean of the university, for her dedication and support to continue in this type of research, which is anthropological, biological, and archaeological research on tridactyls from NASA. We also give thanks to the expert, the forensic experts, physicians, surgeons, among other specialists, Peruvian, Mexicans, que han realizado and una labor científica American, de North America, de that have performed their de research for more than seven years. Eh, hoy jueves, eh, Today, Thursday, 4th of April 2024, is a very special date, Lima and the city of Lima is the epicenter de una of a revelation without comparison, without parallel in the history of the world. In this conference, in this conference, in this press conference, international press conference, about the tridactyl bodies, we will expose studies and analysis performed to the new bodies, no humanos, que también the non, serán the non human bodies that will be researched by the San Luis Gonzaga National University in Ica. It's important to also important que desde to mention de that from the beginning, en el año 2017 hasta la fecha, Joyce Mantilla Since the year 2017, Joyce Mantilla and Jaime Maussan have requested and presented documents and requested attention to the Ministry of Culture and different institutions of the Peruvian government, but they have not received a positive response since then. Un nuevo cuerpo adulto, also, el cual a new body, a new adult alargada, body, will be present that possesses a, an elongated body, y además an una elongated head, and many implants in the body. Tal como, eh, eh, la de los cuerpos, About eh, a ten or a dozen mujeres, eh, of these bodies tenemos, that eh, we have, desde el 2017, also, hasta la fecha, since 2017 until today, found in this area, of Palpang Nazca. In this un diagnóstico meeting, we will present a diagnosis tres, of the three. Se presentará el diagnóstico de tres galardonados. We will present the diagnosis of three recognized awarded scientists, North American scientists that have arrived to Peru a few days ago in order to realize preliminary 
independent studies and make public some of the results in this international press conference. They will also offer the details of the, of the lawsuit presented against the Peruvian state and against the Ministry of Culture of Peru for disinforming the public opinion of Peru and the world regarding the existence of these tridactyl Nazca a continuación, bodies. invitamos al señor Joyce Mantilla, and periodista e investigador, para dar su palabra de bienvenida y presentación de esta conferencia de internacional. Por favor, señor Joyce Mantilla, por favor, a él le brindamos un aplauso, por favor. Muchas gracias. We're asking for an applause for Mr. Pa Mantilla. Thank you very much. Gracias, Enrique. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you. To all those colleagues here that are present here, and this time I want to speak more directly to my colleagues, the reporters, because it is difficult to assume such a challenge of informing about this subject, in which most of my colleagues don't want to face. I understand that our political culture and miseries all, always produce more expectations than the great and transcendental issues of life and for our country. However, there have been voices of very courageous colleagues that in spite of them not being, of this not being a political subject matter, there is some have given some space to this issue and which for which I'm very thankful as well because of showing a very important finding not just for the region of Peru in Ica and Peru but also for the world it's something very transcendental and important and the fact that these tridactyl bodies from Nazca have uh, been known in different languages of the world, in different parts of the world, all places of the world. It is a decision that the researchers have made, the scientific researchers have made this decision, and also the support that we have had from INCARI Institute, Tercer Milenio TV, and others that have helped. And there are more researchers now summing, adding the research to this fact, to this work. According to their experiences and capacities and professional capacities, they con confirm that this finding is extraordinary. As a reporter, I have recently have access to, well, three bodies. Two were known in the previous press conference in Los Angeles. They are tridactyl beings, unquestionably. They do not have mutilations in the hands or feet. The heads are elongated, has not been uh, modified to achieve that shape. And also they have oblique type of eyes that cannot be compared with any of that of a human. Beyond, these, also these bodies have metallic implants on their skin. How were they able to connect something biological, the skin with me metal? We do not know. There's much to uh, study. But the most recent body we have been able to recuperate a few days ago. But unfortunately, I have to maintain the source and the reserve. Then it has allowed me, it has allowed these researchers and my colleague Jaime Maussan and the experts, forensic experts, helping us now to discover some incredible things. This is why we are calling this press conference the definitive po proof, because after this, <laughs> all that would would be required is for one of them to come alive and start walking. It took a few hours to process what we have found in this body. It is a large body. It, they are not the small dolls with which the Ministry of Culture tried to, uh, uh, to lie about, uh, falsify 
uh, this issue. But this is not a spectacular body. According to professionals that have looked at this, so we want to investigate and place this information in the public eye as independent. This has not fallen into the hands of any government. This is why it's so special. Maybe evidence like this was lost before because it fell into the hands of governments. And we have evidence now that we humans have lived together with beings with, from other species. We may be speaking about six or seven different species. So my dear colleagues, reporters, please, let's not be so close-minded to bring before the press, to bring before the Parliament of Mexico something that could be false, if they can be researched in person, if they can be ausculted, if they can be... We have the physical, tangible evidence, and this is what bothers many. However, in order... We, we are uh, thankful for the presence of the Dean of the Anthropologist of the School of Anthropologists of Peru. He is right here with us. An applause, please. I'm very happy for him to be here. Um, I wish also the representatives of the Ar School of Archaeology, who had always been invited, they should also be here, but they have not come. Or what they have tried to do is to try to um, confiscate the bodies. They have tried to confiscate the bodies. There, however, there has been uh, perseverance on the part of the University of Ica professors that have been researching this. So do not allow yourself to be surprised. Do not allow yourself to be surprised. I think that right now personnel from the Ministry of Culture and the Public Ministry are arriving here. Personnel from the Ministry of Culture and the Public Ministry is arriving here. This is a historical moment for the Peruvian society. We want uh, something uh, truly important to... We have the important visit right now of authorities. They're coming into this conference. We would please come to the podium. We would like to know what you are... Uh, what do you need? Excuse us for our interruption. We are being... We are producing a preventive, unopined with the Ministry of Culture regarding the pa cultural patrimony and uh, regarding the exhibition of the mummies that have been uh, shown in public networks. You know that we must protect the public patrimony and we would like to know who is the person responsible of this responsible and who is taking custody of these alleged national patrimony right now. Your reporters, I will start a formal procedure. The bodies will be presented in the video, Joyce Mantilla says. We cannot, we cannot continue accompanying you, says the representative of the ministry and public ministry. It is just a representation of the custody that will be necessary, a custody according to our rules and norms and laws, and I will cede the, vo the microphone to the representative who is right here of the Ministry of Culture. Yes, right now we want to speak with the person in charge. What is your name and your position? I, I'm an attorney of the Ministry of Culture. We have already informed you that through the uh, that allegedly there's a that there's an alleged. Um, 
national patrimony in, in this and Joyce Mantilla says, you have not been willing to research these bodies. You can, you can uh, write your official uh, acta or uh, official letter, demand, official news, official notification. If you want, you can stay with us to see if, 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 if you can come to understand what we are dealing with here. Please take a seat and observe and watch these extraordinary specimens that we have in Peru. It's like they have a different agenda, but they should really make an exception here. This is a unique event, um, fortunate. I'm fortunate to know that finally, after so many years, the Ministry of Culture is doing what it was supposed to do. Finally, they are t taking care of the patrimony. It is very good to know that they are finally preoccupied with the patrimony. There are many places that are abandoned and in ruins all over Peru. Cuelap, famous archaeological site, fell, and, and they are... Why, if they're preoccupied with the tridactyl bodies from Nazca, why haven't they gone to the University of Ica and add their scientists to the scientists over there? And, and to uh, do the research together. So we will continue uh, probably allowing the, the Ministry of Culture right now to do their diligence, uh, legal diligence. Enrique Rodriguez is saying that we will wait for a few minutes so that the public ministry and the Ministry of Culture uh, people continue with their diligence, and after that, we will continue with our conference. We invite, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jaime Maussan, in order to continue with this press, international press conference and presentation of the tridactyl bodies of Nazca and Palpa. We invite the gentlemen from the press to continue, we invite them to continue with this conference. We are inviting Mr. Jaime Maussan, a well-known reporter from Mexico that has more than 50 years of experience as a researcher, investigative researcher. He three times has been national awarded in Mexico and also awarded in the capital of Washington, D.C., as a report. And he also obtained United Nations awarded and also the uh, ONDA uh, award in Spain. And currently, he is the director of Tercer Milenio Channel 360, Tercer Milenio 360 Channel in the city of Mexico. With you, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Maussan, well, due to this interruption, we will have to stop this press conference for a few minutes, and we will continue a little bit later once the authorities have accomplished their, uh, the task they came here to do, their orders, and after that we will continue with, it, with this investigation. A few, I hope that within a few minutes we will continue. So, ladies and gentlemen, dear reporters, we will pause for a few minutes so that the, the ministry, the public ministry and ministry of culture continue with their diligence of the new tridactyl bodies. We will continue after this presentation. In the meantime, we will not we will not cut the transmission. We will continue with this transmission because it is a private transmission. We are not in a museum. We are not in a museum mounting a force. We are not. We do not lie the public with dolls. We do not li lie the public with dolls. 
we're just presenting this public. This is a private conference, press conference for the public that has been interrupted in order to confiscate perhaps some of the bodies of Nazca. I, I'm, I'm happy that, that at least they came here in order to learn about these bodies. This is in the Sheraton Salon, Precursores Salon in the Sheraton Hotel in Lima, Peru. We are transmitting live. And they have arrived with policemen. They have allies with the arrived with the public ministry and the Como Ministry of Culture because they probably they thought that here we would irresponsibly, they thought that we would ir ir irresponsibly show some of the bodies here in public. Our only um, purpose is to inform. This is a live transmission that has come out of anything that was previewed, everything that was expected before. It's a, an unexpected situation. It is an arbitrary intervention to speak about it clearly. They could have waited until the end of the conference, but have interrupted in the middle of the event, perhaps to try to sabotage or boycott the event. But we are not going to cut this live transmission, and you can you are watching live on your cameras, everything that is taking place in this room. We are also here accompanied by one of the researchers of these bodies, these tridactyl bodies. So while they are uh, writing their legal papers, we have here Dr. David Ruiz, forensic member of the Academy of Sciences of New York and Forensic Sciences of Peru. It is a sad thing that in this government, the, the, the 17th Minister of Culture nominated, the 17th Minister of Culture nominated in a few years, instead of supporting the growth of knowledge of all Peruvians, and because this is knowledge for the good of the world, it's not, this is a good for the world, this is patrimony of the world. And her job would be not to restrict information, of, the job of the minister would be to share the information. We have had this information which should transcend. At this moment, the representatives from the Ministry of Culture and the Public Ministry and the police are uh, leaving. This is a moment for history, a sad, pathetic, but I'm sorry to say, sorry to tell, but they, they go with the tail under their legs. Good for that. Good for that. They thought that we were going to bring mummies here. They thought that. I'm, I'm happy that you are paying attention to our social networks so that you find out this is something that cannot be stopped. What happens is that they know that they have failed, they have made a mistake year after year in every intervention that they made, made like this was the wrong move, the wrong move again and again. And this is the reason why there is an international demand on this. Now, let's not generalize because there are also good, good workers, good employees in the Ministry of Culture, but those that come are probably the inept ones, somebody that, those that follow the orders and tell them what to do. Just like bribes should not be, cannot be accepted, I think that there, there's somebody from above 
telling them to do these things. That's my suspicion. I'm here with the rep rep main representatives of representative of the anthropological research in Peru. And they, they probably are afraid because they do not know how, how the demand, the lawsuit that is coming, they will, n will not know how to respond, probably, because what they have done is taken pictures across a window screen. But let's continue with our presentation. Let's, let's I'm giving the, the microphone to Enrique. Uh, this top point, uh, we are in, uh, facing a small interruption for a few minutes, I'm sorry, before, before it was an unexpected situation, a very surprising situation because in some way, Joyce Mantilla and Jaime Maussan are able to very precisely catch the attention of the government of Peru, the minister of Peru, for, uh, after many years of having been able to, to transmit this issue to the, to the world, when finally their judicial, finally when the Ministry of Culture arrives for a judicial purpose, uh, that's the way they caught their attention to, of the world. Here we will have for a few bueno, minutes Mr. Jaime Maussan. Well, yes, it's very to be lamented uh, all that has happened, uh, which comes to illustrate that with, which with we are facing, with which we are facing. We are facing these authorities, and this is why we have demand, uh, started a lawsuit for $300 million, because what they are really trying to do is to halt, impede a transcendental discovery such as this. They're trying to impede this discovery to be known all over the world. We have already invited here very important Dr. John McDowell, who recently received a medal, the Grafford Medal, which is considered the Nobel in Forensic Sciences, because he's one of the top scientists in the world. In this field, he came with Dr. William Rodriguez, the director of anthropology of the, the state of Maryland, and also by Dr. Jim Caruso, Jim Caruso, director of the Forensic Sciences Institute of the city of Denver. They are three qualified, highly qualified experts. And I hope that briefly, soon, they will be able to present some preliminary results of this extraordinary investigation that we are performing. For this reason, I want to continue by uh, showing the finding of the new bodies that we have been able to research. Some of the new bodies in the last seven sí, years. Adelante con el video, por favor. If you can see on the left, that's the body that was researched by the Ministry of Culture, the one on the left. That body, it's an assembled body. And we knew it from the very beginning, and the Ministry of Culture never presented where it was found. Never did carbon-14, DNA, but we did, we did, we did. The body on the right has eggs, the one on the left is assembled. Look at the enormous differences between both bodies. The one is assembled and the other is not. And this is why we are doing this lawsuit, because one cannot compare one body with the other. This is a head. This is the false head, these are false evidence, this is what is false, these are the bodies that were in researched by the forensic scientists from the minister of the public ministry, Falabio Estrada, and these are the bodies that were confiscated by the Ministry of Culture at the Peruvian airport, national airport in Callao, Jorge Chavez Airport. As you can see now, that's the letter. 
Un momento, por favor. One moment, please. Un momento, por favor. One moment, please. Vamos a escuchar, por favor, We're going las conclusiones to después de cuatro años de investigación four years de la Universidad de Ica. We are going to listen favor, to the conclusions arrived after four years of research by the University of Ica. Finally, as a result of our investigations, the investigation team arrived at the, the conclusion that the desiccated bodies are completely authentic from a biological perspective and do not have signs of having been manipulated. Our scientific focus has been and the results contribute to the authenticity of these bodies. 11 signatures of 11 professors from the University of Ica. Here is Dr. Roger Zuniga, anthropologist, the coordinator of this research, also Dr. Hernandez, and they will soon confirm. Also in Mexico, some live investigations, analysis tests were conducted and with scientists that had never been in contact with these bodies, and they came to the conclusion that these were legitimate bodies, not assembled bodies. So this was also done in Mexico. And therefore, I repeat, if these bodies are false, then why did the Minister of Culture arrive here to Peru? They know that the bodies, I think that in their conscience, Conscience, they know that these bodies are genuine, and what they probably want is to make them disappear. Maybe they came here to make them disappear. These are some of the uh, tests conducted live. That's the hand of Dr. Salsa. You can find that information in YouTube. That's the information about the DNA in this page. Of course, it doesn't have embargo, the continuity that has the custody of the clear custody of the samples. No, Maybe uh, an issue. Vamos a detener un momento, por favor. Vamos, esto es, uh, se le this, is, this was sent to the Minister of Culture on January the 11th, 2017 on the part of Institute Incari, led by Thierry Jamin, and they are informing here the Ministry of Culture, please get involved. Upon not receiving any response, we sent a letter, we also sent a letter to the President of Peru, the President of Peru, to the President Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, on July of 2017. Once again, the letter was received, but there was no response, no reply. Then there was this letter of the mission of UNESCO. UNESCO sent a letter in order to call attention of the Peruvian government. We visited the uh, Ministry of Culture in 2017 personally and tried to get their attention regarding this issue for them to get involved, but they did not want to receive me. I was there. I was there. It's not that they came to me. I went there personally, and they sent me an employee of a lower echelon, an uh, employee but told me, telling me that they would not have the moment. I went with my attorney, Rafael Arcángel Berrocal Ramos, my attorney, and we presented there, once again, a request in order to be able to speak about this with them and continue to reinforce the research, to continue with the research. This is a body that we are watching now, it's called Alberto. Alberto is being investigated, researched. Of course, they have to be taken to even higher level universities. Um, this is something that we are requesting the Ministry of Culture of, to be able to, so that they allow us to take these bodies to a higher level institution, educational institution with the proper equipment, etc. This is Alberto. Now you're watching Alberto. There are many 
bodies found. There are at least 100 bodies found in this extraordinary finding. About 100 bodies and seven different species. This is now we are seeing Josephine, Josefina. And we discovered that these beings had eggs in their insides, eggs that are surrounded by capillary uh, network. How, how can that? This cannot be uh, the head of a, the skull of a llama, as many try to say. And all of this has still have to be validated again by science. These are different radiogra radiographies, x-rays, tomographies. Also, the University of St. Petersburg in Russia declared them to be authentic. And this uh, creature has a metallic implant made of osmium. Or part of it inside is made of osmium, which is a very rare metal. Rarer than platinum, it was discovered only 200 years ago. But this body is a thousand years old, perhaps. Then Maria is a humanoid type being, and until today we have not been able to find any signs of having been mutilated by the fingers or the, any part of the body in any way. The, the bodies are authentic. Yes, it's, she's very similar to us, human beings. This is why we consider that they are humanoid. A humanoid is a body, non-human body, that is characteristic, that has human characteristics. This is Santiago now, a body that ha we were barely being able to recuperate in the month of January, February. January. It may have, there may have been some um, sort of a bad violence or aggressiveness trying to um, avoid us from presenting these uh, new findings. Who knows? Maybe they tr <laughs> were trying to take them away in order to disappear, in, disappear them, and but they could not. Here you see it, his eyes are oblique. The, the head is very big which are evidences that do not confirm that this uh, is a humanoid being. However, there also is no evidence, and I have to be very clear about this, that the tests performed on this show that there are differences with human beings. In other words, it could be a, a conversion type of evolution. That's a question. Could it be that different species evolved in similar way, but keep similarities and differences? Could it be? Is this a possibility of convergent evolution? Personally, I'm not a scientist. I'm a reporter, but I think that that's probable. And here are the analysis through tomographies, details that will have to be analyzed, I hope, in universities of the highest level on a world stage. And these are the fingerprints that we found on Santiago, which look or horizontal, they're completely horizontal, not la like the human beings. These are extraordinary, extraordinary images that we were able to get yesterday. Uh, we got the interior of the teeth area, the mouth area, and there's much to research still. Here, nothing has been found, no trace, neither in hands or feet, of having been cut or added fingers. No trace of that. Everything suggests that this is a completely real event. In other words, authentic bodies. And now, this is Sebastian, another of the bodies. It is considered to be a child of four years old, maybe six. According, if you compare them to the knowledge that we have about human beings, it could be about four and six years old, or between 12 and 14 years regarding 
It's also a tridactyl being. And using microscopes yesterday, well, here you can see what seem to be eyelashes. What you are watching right now are fibers. His, in other words, the eyes were sewn together. These are fire, fibers. How come about 1,000 years ago? And on the back of the neck, it has a plaque, a metal plaque with inscriptions, horizontal. Here, it's, it's four phalanges in each finger. All of this, I hope, will be researched by scientists of the highest level. There are already important scientists like David Ruiz from Peru, scientists like Jose Salce from the highest level in Mexico, scientists like Roger Zuniga, professor of the University of Ica, San Luis Gonzaga, that have confirmed their authenticity. And now I will present you a new being that we only received a few days ago. Also a tridactyl being very similar to Montserrat. This would be a type of being of an adult young woman of perhaps between 16 and 20 years of age with an extraordinary surprise. And this is the definitive proof. This female was pregnant. How can one can make a trick of, of something like this? Dr. Salse will try to demonstrate, but it's very difficult that the being in her interior, interior it's a tridactyl. These are its fingers. These are not anomalies because the fingers seem to be functional. This is the size of the discovery. This is the great treasure of Peru, the great treasure of Peru, a treasure that perhaps uh, new interests want to occult, hide. Why do they want to hide this? Why, what do they fear? Why not allow the research to go on? We, are, we, are, we will request, we will be able to cons reconcile this millionaire demand lawsuit on Peru. And one of our requests will be to allow us to take these bodies to other countries in order to perform uh, research. As you can see, it has like, like a gold uh, implant on the head, something extraordinary. Yesterday we saw it under a microscope. The, the skin was already attaching itself, covering the border of this implant. Here is this being. It has a large head. It is not a definitive uh, finding. It requires more investigation. That's the interior of this being. This is the interior of Montserrat. We have named her Montserrat Sol because Montserrat Sol, the Virgin of Montserrat, has this uh, sun like figure in Spain. Here we find this, this little, ba uh, this little uh, specimen we have, we're calling uh, Rafael. Uh, uh, extraordinary, unique uh, images of a being that was pregnant, and I don't know if it was she died due to the pregnancy, according to some scientific commentaries. Perhaps the the embryo was crisscrossed inside the belly, and this could have been a problem to the mother. We do not know, but this is a very dramatic story of a of a. A mother that has her hands crossed over the belly, almost as protecting her, her, her fetus, and this is how she died. And this is how what, what seems to be the tridactyle characteristics of the, of the baby as well. 
thus far the image is not as clear. Here you have the three-dimensional being uh, inside the belly. You have this, this baby inside the belly. This is the definitive proof that we are talking about. If these beings are tridactyl and this is demonstrated and this female was pregnant, it will imply that we will have we would have a legitimate extraordinary discovery if the baby was also tridactyl. This is the first time that we are showing these extraordinary images. Apparently, one of the little legs of Raphael, the embryo, was uh, twisted, perhaps due to the pass of time and the desiccation. Rafael. Here you can see the details that an expert as Dr. David Ruiz and Dr. Salce will be able to explain to you better than I. Okay. That was the presentation of Mr. Jaime Maussan presenting the tridactyl beings and these last bodies that were shown that were found in caves in Nazca and Palpa. Sirs, continuing with this program, we have the participation of Dr. Roger Zuniga, the coordinator of investigations of the tridactyl bodies in the San Luis Gonzaga University of Ica. I ask you for applauses, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I, I want to say that I lament profoundly what happened today. I believe that this is an, at an attack against culture, against knowledge and science, above all, libert freedom of expression. I ask forgiveness to those scientists that have come from abroad, from other countries, to uh, contribute with knowledge regarding this discovery. I'm mortified because of that. An institution that has the obligation of getting involved in research in order to reach to good in good terms to scientific result, the first thing they do is to block it. Those of us that are in this uh, research all suffer this kind of attitudes that have taken us also to the judiciary conflict. They initiated like a lawsuit against us professors at the university just to 
be willing to research this, but being in a con country with so much corruption, with so, m so much ethical, moral problems, authorities are capable of starting uh, false accusations to not just to stop us, but to stop this knowledge for science. I am very affected. Not, I'm disillusioned of what's going on in my country. This is why I have a deep um, th thankfulness in this, in this opportunity that we have been a, have to travel to a brother country that has embraced us with much kindness to hear what we have to say, what we have researched, and to give our real, genuine opinion about this situation. In this event, it was on the second public audience taking care uh, in Mexico, public audience in the Congress, we could share we could share the official pronouncement of 11 professors of our university to the con we shared the conclusions that we have shared, uh, arrived at even with the limitations that we have uh, lacking uh, technological equipment etc we continue moving forward they are not going to intimidate us they are not going to inhibit us because science has to impose itself against the old-fashioned knowledge that is no longer viable. Science is moving forward and all humans have the right to open our minds and get to know reality. Is that what they want to hide? Is this what they want to hide? They want to hide the sun with a finger forever. There is an avalanche of information coming out regarding this case, and they will not be able to stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, organizers of this scientific event, ladies and, la and gentlemen, reporters, nation, and international reporters, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very grateful to direct my word to this select public, to this about regarding our tridactyl bodies research in the San Luis Gonzaga University. I represent also those authorities that were supporting us, and I'm very thankful. I must inform to the world regarding these scientific discoveries and the results of the tridactyl bodies, the desiccated tridactyl bodies found in the Palpa, Nazca, Department of Ica region, this finding. Regarding our research in the uni university, we began in the months of September and October of 2019 with Guaguita, Victoria, Maria, Vic Luis, which correspond to specimens with humanoid reptilian characteristics. As any other research, we continue advancing, moving forward, and found that those that started the studies were few. We were willing, we had the courage to try to the research, my profound respect and recognition to all the people and institutions that prefer to know the truth in spite of the difficulties. My recognitions and greetings to Thierry Jamin, to Jaime Maussan, that has always been working with this, to Joyce Mantilla, Dr. Salce Benitez, Martin Achirica, Jose de la Cruz, Rios, and other persons, and to the members of the research of my university, the UNICA, Hernández, and all others. 
They were the first to begin this study. Institutions called, called to find out the truth about mysteries such as these, these bodies. But others, but these others, ridicule. They re recurs to ridicule, bribery, and other means that should not happen. I don't know what they will do with this shameful act. Probably to uh, hold false testimony about what happened. But the, here, the international and national press has seen what is happening. The five specimens that we had at the university began to generate controversies, especially at the world level. The results that were obtained, that were shared in the in the hearings of the Congress in Mexico in 2023 in September, are we must we can say very with certainty that the results of these new specimens, as the ones that we are going to show today, talking about Santiago, Sebastian, Montserrat, will break all known logic of uh, common scientific knowledge about the existence of different kinds of living beings on the earth regarding their their body structure and anatomic structure as it was said before there were only few persons initiating this study now we are happy to say to see that there are many important scientists joining the research that give guarantee and solidity to the importance of this uh, scientific endeavor that, and searching for new scientific knowledge that can revolutionize understanding of humanity and science. This is like a dialectical jump to a new position in the world uh, of something new and revolutionary would be coming to the world. What is being exposed today is the irrefutable evidence that we were never alone. The, although these beings are different from us, this event initiates the beginning of a new era of knowledge in Peru and the world that will deepen the change of knowledge from ar archaic and anachronic to a new scientific understanding of man and a new mythical, metaphysical, and, and scientific knowledge that will generate deep changes in our way of seeing the world, understanding the world. Today, this study doesn't end. There are many aspects, many, many more aspects to study. This is why we, are, we request the participation of many more scientists in the world, of professional schools, of businesses of Peru and the world, all institutions of go good will for this, because we have the right to know. I greet today Manuel Fuentes Robles, a, a dean of the anthropologists in Peru, and for his participation in this profession, and also the different schools, professional schools, with different specialists that will favor our own, will favor even more this event. I thank them all. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, these were the words of Mr. Zuniga, Professor Zuniga, coordinator of the research in the University of Ica. Before continuing with this program, we, we want, first of all, uh, ask uh, forgiveness for the events that happened during this lamentable uh, situation of inter intervention that happened before uh, of the public ministry and the Ministry of Culture in this press conference that has caused some uh, disappointment, uh, perhaps. But the important thing is the research uh, uh, favored by Mantilla and Maussan. So we can pay attention. We need to pay attention with this very important discovery for humanity. So uh, my friends, 
At this point, we will have the participation of Dr. John McDowell, a famous awarded forensic scientist in odont odontologist, forensic odontologist, due to his he, he's been awarded due to uh, his experimental procedures. He has also been awarded by the, the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. And this, is, this award can only be given to individuals that have made great advances in forensic sciences. As mentioned before, it is almost as receiving the Nobel Prize but in forensic sciences. So here with us, we give the most cordial welcome to Mr. John McDowell. Thank you. We want to communicate that we have a new translation team that will translate what uh, Mr. McDowell is going to express. Good morning, buenos dias. My Spanish is no bueno, so I apologize. Espanol. Professor, doctor, you owe me no apology. No, uh, mi español no es muy bueno. All you have to do is look at the British House of Commons eh, or many other congresses or organizations around the world, and you see that similar del mundo. events occur. Eh, ocurren eventos similares. This is not a reflection Esto on the no people or the gente, government of Peru o al gobierno de Perú en sí. like Estas cosas así And suceden. President of many uh, international uh, organizations. I've also uh, chaired faculty council meetings and other types of meetings with faculty. And when the stakes are high, people become very involved. And sometimes we, we, including myself, sometimes we overreact. And so, uh, again, I, I am not offended. So uh, I do want to uh, thank uh, many people for allowing me the opportunity to be here today and to organize a, a small a team of people who I greatly respect and have had friendships and professional relationships with for many years. I know that their integrity is unquestioned, uh, their credibility is at the highest levels, and we would not be here if we expected anything to happen that would affect our credibility. The members of the team that I came here with, who are co-equals with me, they have merely asked me to speak on their behalf but the uh, other members are uh, Dr. James Caruso, who you heard about, is a forensic pathologist, uh, chief medical examiner of the uh, city and county of Denver, Colorado. Uh, his uh, long-standing uh, curriculum vitae, his resume is among the best you could ever find. Now, the same is true of uh, our other colleague, uh, Dr. William Rodriguez, uh, he's a forensic anthropologist and has been associated with a number of different organizations, including the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology in the United States, and also the State Department has done missions for the Department of Defense and the State Department, as has Dr. Caruso. So you have... Uh, the highest quality individuals who have been invited to come here. And I want to thank uh, Jaime Musan for uh, helping us to get here. But let me assure you that none of us, Dr. Caruso, Dr. Rodriguez, myself, have received any kind of financial remuneration for being here. We are volunteering our time 
because we believe that this is a very important investigation. It should not be minimized or trivialized. The, the people involved here uh, are doing their best in a scientific inquiry to find out if we can identify what's going on. Uh, I am not calling in to uh, question the, the motives of the government of Peru or anyone associated with the government or universities. But remember that universities, the purpose of a university is to do scientific inquiry. And if that is taken away from us or diminished in any way, then we all lose. But um, that said, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I rambled just a little bit, but I do want you to know that uh, I, I often speak from my heart and sometimes I'm not totally clear in what I mean. I do have a small short script here today that I will uh, refer to and it will be very short. Uh, I think that's appropriate uh, to the time uh, that we are in this investigation, the point that we are. So, if I may, and I'm old, so I need glasses. I do want to thank the gracious hosts, especially the University of Ica. The, they could not have been more cordial and professional with us. Everything was made available to us that we requested. Nothing was hidden or kept occult. Uh, everything was available to us. Uh, at no point did anyone say, no, you cannot look at that. Uh, anything we asked to see, it was provided to us. Let me assure you that Mr. Masson has not interfered in any way or injected any of his own personal opinions or positions into what the doctors on our team uh, are developing. In fact, he said at the outset, at the initiation of this, that he would not uh, influence us in any way and did not expect a specific outcome. And if uh, we just report what we find. Let me clarify too, any opinions that are expressed today, any comments that I make are strictly my own. The same is true of Dr. Rodriguez and Dr. Caruso. They do not represent the opinions or position of our employers or of our uh, organizations. So it's, it's us. Peru is uh, a wonderful country. Uh, this is my first time here. My experiences have been very positive, and I can speak for my colleagues when they have spoken to me exactly the same way. Uh, the people, loving, open, uh, very welcoming, and I appreciate that. And the same is true of the people we've associated with the universities or the, uh, the personal uh, people that we've worked, at, uh, worth, uh, worked with, including uh, Dr. Jose Salsa, who without his help, uh, the progress of our investigation would not have proceeded as efficiently as it has. Now, that said, I want you to know that this is very initial uh, examination that we have performed. We have no final opinions at this time, and that's one of the things that we're going to recommend. We respectfully request that the government and the Ministry of Culture uh, allow further investigation unimpeded. And that, again, is the purpose of scientific inquiry, is to look at it, develop hypotheses. If the hypotheses do not work, we reject them. We move on to other hypotheses or explanations. Um, I firmly believe, as do my colleagues and everyone that I've interacted with, that at every step of the examination process, we should, and I hope we have, paid appropriate respect to the cultural heritage 
that the Peruvian el people and to the bodies cultura, themselves. Uh, we have done our best uh, to respect uh, the culture that uh, we are uh, perhaps not as familiar with as we would like to be. Further, we don't believe that scientists in the United States are any better than anybody else. Perhaps we have uh, better facilities and it might be a, might be a recommendation that if uh, the bodies could be released to other facilities that have uh, better equipment, uh, have experts uh, that would look at any evidence in an unbiased uh, way. Also, we are willing to consult uh, with the government or the uh, Ministry of Culture to make recommendations of how to move forward with any identification procedures and to perform a proper forensic examination. Now, I, I have a phrase I use often. I say there are no emergencies in forensic science. We take time. We collect data. We analyze that data. We develop preliminary uh, conclusions. I don't want to say conclusions, excuse me. Uh, preliminary opinions that will lead us perhaps to a conclusion. Part of the forensic examination might be to determine whether any of the anomalies that have been identified are of ancient modifications or modern modifications. And with a proper forensic investigation, we would hope that we would be able to uh, evaluate the, that. Presently, it is our opinion that what we have examined is worthy of additional scrutiny and study. We respectfully encourage the Peruvian Ministry of Culture to facilitate transfer of specimens to research facilities with the resources, equipment, and personnel to perform further examinations consistent with the highest forensic standards. And that said, if the opportunity arises to work appropriately with the Ministry of Culture or any other uh, Peruvian organization, I would welcome the opportunity to work with them. I also have another phrase, none of us are as smart as all of us. If we work together, enjoy each other's opinions, I think we move forward much more effectively. Also at this point, I want to make sure that we have no definitive conclusions and it would pre be premature for me to say so. As a matter of transparency and clarity, I want to be sure that everyone knows no restrictions were placed on our examination procedures and we believe that everyone involved was open and forthright with us. The statements made by our scientific me uh, team are our own and any statements made by others must not be construed to be our opinion. That's the conclusion of my formal remarks. Thank you, Dr. McDowell. Gracias, Dr. McDowell. Y prosiguiendo con este Thank you, Dr. McDowell. And changing to the continuing with the program we have uh, and uh, at this point the participation of Dr. David Ruiz, he's president of the Legal uh, Medicine Society of Peru, uh, member of the New York Academy of Sciences, of the highest level. Thank you. 
thank you very much. Perhaps you don't know me. When I finish my medical preparation studies, I was I was 25 years upon being after being graduated and had the courage of um, doing a research work. And they gave me the first award, national award back. And this allowed me to participate in many other things. My first invitation to the Academy of Sciences of New York was in 1994. It was a very interesting experience because I had many, many uh, available books. At the time when there were no emails, as we have now. Or it was. And then I became um, very much interested as a plastic surgeon because from the beginning, I, I always felt as an artist of structure. And these bodies are an art for me. And I went into this school in, in the San Marcos University and on the uh, first, with the first um, position as a student. And also when I graduated, I was the first one, the, the, the first position in the general in the general uh, among all the other students. At that time, it was the most difficult university to go into. There was nothing else to say. And I had the privilege of uh, studying with the best I had. There was. At that time, already terrorists, guerrilla fighters were captured and uh, there were several presidential counselors be because I had the opportunity to uh, conduct forensic studies with the uh, presidential counselors of this country. I took it as a good opportunity. The issue is that I was in a television program that they invited me to speak about another subject. But the producer asked me also to intervene regarding what we are presenting now here, regarding the scientific issue of these bodies. For me, I had already seen tomographies all of my life. And it was something so primary, so elemental, so easy. I, I have been watching tomographies 30 years. It's something that I do all the time. And I saw very clearly in these images that there was no manipulation, no manipulation. So I said, yes, of course. And I gave my opinion. And it seems that all the privilege that Dr. Suñiga, who is present here, thank you very much, he directs the research team, which was called the desiccated bodies of Nazca. Now we call them the tridactyl bodies of Nazca Palpa. He first communicated with me via, uh, via a Zoom to talk. And I gave him all my opinions. And then I traveled to the city of Ica to see the bodies directly and participate. And I also traveled to Mexico and to share and, uh, and to see the presentation over there. And now I am happy to recognize as, the, as past president of the Peruvian Society of Legal Medicine. It is an honor. This is not that somebody named me because of a public uh, minister or uh, a pub, as a pub. This is a, this, the, the people that came here, they, 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 they live because they're paid by the state, but not me. 
I'm not a public servant regarding all, any of these. During all my tenure, I was I never allowed anyone to pay for my uh, airplane trips or or, or food or, or for any activity. I want to tell you that when my my um, I ended the study of medicine, uh, they told me. My parents told me, why don't you go abroad? And I said, no, 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 there's a lot to do here in Peru. And here we have an enormous privilege. And thanks to Dr. Zuniga and Jaime and other colleagues, we know that there are many good things to do here in Peru that we can share with the world. And my opinion is that these bodies are not just from Peru, they are from the world. But I. I believe that they belong to the world. And this is my commitment, something that moves me to share. And of course, uh, in social networks say, many people say, oh, you must be getting rich. You must be getting rich. You should be doing something else. No, I'm here out of love and to share all the wisdom that I will not take anywhere when I leave. I'm on the sixth decade of my life. And what I simply want is not to be um, formed by fear. I don't want us to be formed by fear that instead of simply uh, somebody listening to something like this, they should have stayed and learned about about what is happening and then think about how they could collaborate talking about the ministries they should have stayed to learn and then to collaborate of course these things are expensive to us but but no they, it's like they don't care they just came for a little while and did their uh, diligence the legal diligence and left they should have stayed to learn I have a friend that uh, makes uh, vaccines for uh, coronavirus for all Latin America. And the ministry, Pilar Massetti back then uh, was there. Well, I don't know why she came because she was a public, a public employee, but she came and didn't show any interest. Like this, this, these people, they just come here and what do they do? They just come, do not add anything new. They do not contribute. They leave out. And the worst thing is that they leave from the money of the Peruvians. I'm sorry about my indignation, the tone of my voice. I thank the past president. I'm, I'm a former president of the forensic no, I am recognizing John McDowell, former president of the Forensic Sciences um, Association in the United States. I'm sorry, sorry very much for the bad moment we have uh, make you live because of these mediocre people. It is not the first time that I face this challenge. But one has to have the courage for certain things. One, one needs to have courage in order to work with the truth. And we, you and I, we have been always with the truth. Thank you very much. We, we give thanks to the participation from the Dr. Rabi uh, Ruiz, David Ruiz, the Society of Legal Medicine and Forensics, Legal Medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, now we will listen to Dr. Jose Salce Benitez. Dr. Jose Salce Benitez, he is a naval, Navy med physician and director of the forensic sciences of the Navy Secretary of Mexico, has been the research director of uh, health sciences 
in the Navy of Mexico as well. We give him thanks and a round of applause. Peace. Good morning to all. A very brotherly embrace to all those people that have been able to to make this possible, my special recognition is that Jaime Maussan and the professors of this uh, Unica University, Dr. Zuniga, and also the invaluable presence of Dr. McDowell, a prominent man of science in forensic sciences, sciences Dr. Rafael Berrocal as well. I give, and I will begin my comments saying that we have studied and analyzed through different techniques and technologies to diverse tridactyl bodies, desiccated bodies, being approximately more than 10 bodies and more than 20 separate loose pieces. Both those 60 centimeter ones and those are larger, uh, which are more human-like. Of, out of these studies, we have been able to determine without a doubt that these are completely biological, organic, harmonious, and without artificial alterations or modifications. The more renewable, relevant moment and recent moment has the, been the confirmation that important scientific personalities with authority, like Dr. Mark Dowell, ex-president, of the Forensic Sciences Institute of the U.S. and Dr. Rodriguez and others that are with him. Their observations coincide with mine and give it's, it's gravity and seriousness to this research regarding these humanoid tridactyl bodies. In the, on this occasion, the, the more relevant body is that of Montserrat, of similar characteristics of those of Maria. Montserrat has been called the definitive proof, and this is due to the fact that in her abdominal exploration through X-rays and tomographs with three-dimensional three reconstruction tomographies, we have found that she is in a process of gestation in which we can observe a fetal body inside a gestational sac that we can, with, in which we can obs, uh, observe a tridactyl coincidence. And this makes her, this situation heterogeneous and makes the situation very unique. She would have been about 160, 1 meter 60 centimeters with tridactyl feet and hands. On the feet, we also can observe the presence of nails. In the abdomen, Montserrat's abdomen, we have been able to observe that there is a perfectly preserved fetal stage specimen. This fetal stage specimen was of a great relevance because in her hands we were able to find tridactylia. In a few moments we will be able to observe this uh, tridactyl image where it, it is found, where the fetus is found and its particular characteristics. From Montserrat we can observe that she is very similar to what we know as a human being. However, her characteristics are unique that make her different, unique, and belonging to some species of tridactyl. If we can uh, move forward towards the uh, belly contained, the abdominal contained, please, contents. Please. Here we have, in her abdomen, on the left side, a fetal structure on the pelvis uh, level, where we can observe on the uh, upper part a cranium behind a vertebral, vertebral column 
with ribs in the inferior part extremities and close to the cranium, close to the skull, we find extended in a fetal towards the head, the arm, the left arm. In these reconstruction three-dimensional tomographies, we can see clearly the head and the spinal column. Could we return to the previous image first? Could, could, could we return to the previous image a little bit? There. Head, vertebral column, ribs, and you can see the arm towards the head, like bent towards the head. Can we go to the last part of the video, please? As part of the studies that we were making for the first time, here we place an endoscope inside the abdominal cavity of Montserrat. With this endoscope, we can see, we could see that there are very small bones and mus muscle tissue which is broken inside the abdominal wall and in the part that corresponds to the Heliac crest, which is the hip of Montserrat's body, we can see that attached to it, there is a fetal desiccated material that at first sight, it's difficult to um, see, identify, but with the reconstruction, the three-dimensional reconstruction of the tomographies, we can detail with exactitude the presence of a fetal body of approximately 12 centimeters long. This, if it was human, it would be coincidental to a gestation of about 12 weeks. It would be a fetal product of about four months of gestation, if it were human. We can, can we please move forward? to the end of the presentation. This study with endoscopy was done yesterday afternoon. afternoon. Uh, is there please a way to move forward the video even more? We are repeating the same image. Could we go to the end of the presentation, please? I'm sorry about these technical difficulties, but the image is being repeated over and over. Can we move to the end of the of the video, please? Just to look at the, with clearly the fetal structure, which is at the end of the video. The technicians are working on this issue right now. Okay, this image as. As soon as it ends uh, rotating, could you please freeze it so we can give you an explanation? There. In the superior part, upper part, is the base of the cranium. All of this is the spinal column. All of this is the spinal cord. We can see the vertebral bodies one by one, and we can see the arms, and we can see the inferior extremities and from the arms let me uh, point out what would correspond to the humerus what, what would correspond to the forearm with radius and cubit and here 
where, where the wrist or the carpal bones would be, there is an, a tridactyl uh, shape, almost like a general bag or shape in the form of a hook. This is the origin of the second finger that looks like a hook and the third finger also looking like a hook. I hope that we will be able to make this image clearer. This is the base of the cranium, I'm repeating. This is the vertebral column, complete, with the presence of the vertebral bodies that can be clearly seen. Arms, lower extremities, and the humerus, or corresponding the uh, the for the forearm with radius and cubit or corresponding bones the the wrist or carpal articulation and the fingers three fingers coming out with the shape of a hook i am uh, saying that this is an important relevant st structure of a specimen of approximately 12 centimeters in length, it would be impossible to replicate, falsify, alter, mutilate, and build, construct as something false, falsely. This is 100% original, biological, organic, harmonious, and evident and irrefutable. Therefore, and lastly, it's important to point out the relevance and need to preserve these tridactyl humanoid bodies that since they were extracted from in the point of fi finding, their degradation has started. Their, their decay has started. So we need also to preserve them and to continue the studies academically because we are before the opportunity of ac accepting the existence of a unique evolutionary chain to that different to what is known today by science. As I said before, on multiple occasions, my conclusions, these bodies are humanoid, similar among them, tridactyl, that are, deserve a place, a taxonomic place in Arwen's biological tree, evolutionary tree. We don't know their predecessors or descent. But here in Peru, we have different bodies in different stages from those that are very babies like Santiago Juvenile and now like Montserrat in a gestation with a body in a gestational period, an embryo. This can help us establish their physical similarities among them, perhaps recognizing them as part of a family with similar characteristics or phenotypes and as a common and irrefutable data, datum, this information can tell us where, whether this is an alternate uh, species to human beings or a completely different species. Therefore, we need more of this knowledge to be clear. Please stop negating. Remember that eyes do not see what the brain doesn't recognize. But you can allow knowledge to be the light of your understanding and allow the bodies to come out to the public for the light of knowledge in humanity. Let's work together of this very relevant case that could be one of the most important last paradigms that could give, would add to one of the most important questions that humanity is making. And let's support more this investigation of the tridactyl of humanoids. For God and for the nation, thank you very much to all of you. Con ustedes fue la presentación del doctor José Sánchez de Gutiérrez.
It was the participation of Dr. Jose Salce Benitez, we call it. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, we will hear the words of Dr. Zuniga, coordinator, no, I'm sorry. Now, we give the podium to Dr. Rafael Bar Berrocal, who, uh, who's attorney, constitutional attorney. I know we have undergone a difficult moment that has created some emotional instability, but this is the heat of the moment and also things that happen in these endeavors. However, I must manifest that all, that all, of, for all of those that had anteceded me regarding the behavior of the public ministry and the Ministry of Culture. But I would like to call attention upon a completely illegal intervention that happened, which was very daring, very daring, very daring. Maybe they thought that they would find the bodies here to confiscate them, but in those only, only then they would have been able to confiscate this and do what they wanted to create, to declare them null or negative and avoid the evidence. But only here we are transmitting life and putting on the table of the world, of humanity, the knowledge, the scientific knowledge, in order to recognize and enrich science in favor of the great good of humanity. If they want to come and confiscate and take and intervene illegally to do this, I think that they are completely wrong if they want to do this. Now, well, I'm going to sum up, summarize what happened in the Mexican Congress as, as what happened in, also in Hollywood, in Los Angeles. Today, I must also ratify in my country and as well as in other countries, so all the countries in the world, that for these special cases, we need a constitutional reform so that these things that we saw today do not happen again. We need constitutional reforms. For that, we will need a uh, judicial backing so that scientists that really want to demonstrate the truth, the new knowledge, the new findings, they, would, they, will, they will have to have uh, complete support from the law. Unfortunately, there is a uh, not, not much legal support for this. They were coming to intervene legally against an alleged pre-Hispanic finding that is not even well defined by them. But here are the experts worried to make clear to the world what they are looking for. We are just looking for the truth. They are just looking for the truth. This is an emblematic case in our country and the world. Starting from the universal right of man, it's imperative in the world the freedom of, towards knowledge and expression. They are trying to eliminate this with these actions. These are scientific investigations that go in favor of humanity. Well, we are in the middle of this investigation. Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, and dozens of scientists I could quote had their time, and they were defamed in the past. They were humiliated in the past. They thought that they were crazy. However, a few decades, decades later, or sometimes in the case of others, hundreds of years later, 
they were recognized due to their discoveries. We also based upon their efforts, our discoveries, our science. This is similar, but here the courageous are separated from others. My dear friends from Peru and the world and through this uh, means of communication, it's important to say that the tridactyl bodies found here in Peru, specifically in the district of Palpa and Nazca in the Ica region, well, they represent a human responsibility. And this human responsibility, there is a citizen of Mexico, there are citizens of Mexico and citizens from Peru that have done the best to demonstrate before the world whether they are false or true within the space of, of what they might or might not be extraterrestrials. But we have some forms of evidence, DNA, carbon-14, that are showing from many years ago that at the same time they have enough empirical scientific science that some, some of the the, the, their algorithms do not correspond to what is known in humanity, so to speak. So what we need is to deepen the investigation. This case has been become viral in the world. The incompetence that at some time was demonstrated by the employees in the Ministry of Culture well, perjudicated one person, and not just one person, but also the scientific community itself. The declarations, obviously, of the employees of the Ministry of Culture denying and or saying that these are assembled dolls, in, although they di did not research the bodies, but carefully. And the bodies, them, the, the genuine ones, are in, in the process of in investigation by the University of Ica. But they took uh, crafts, they took crafted dolls in order to declare worldwide in a press conference that all of the bodies were found. Where? In the institution itself, in the name of the state, in a room that belonged to the state, they declared that all the bodies were f false. Why? In order to uh, commit a fraud in a way during for six or more years. Even they even one even said that uh, uh, the reporter uh, Mancia Joyce Mancia Man, Mancia was was a Mancia was a clown from Mr. Mausan. Where are we? Where can we see this? This is this is why Mr. Mausan is demanding the government of Peru. The, this research is based on fundamental issues here. Uh, in, Constitutional norms, rights have been violated. In order not to uh, make you more tired than you are, uh, perhaps, uh, for all the things that have been said before, uh, an, a lawsuit, a, a, a preliminary extrajudiciary process has been started in order to reach a conciliation with the uh, state employees, with the state itself, in order to reivindicate uh, an indemnization demand due to emerging uh, five million and 240 million uh, due to a moral ethical damage, you know, a totaling of 300 million, because the dignity of man does not have limits to be catalogued in a scale of value of how much human dignity costs. There are no limits. This is the dignity of man does not have a price. And Mr. Maussan is a person that is more prudent. And in, even though the, the bod, in the legal bodies of Peru, this legal action will allow to be able to sit and talk for conciliation, an agreement, and, what, and the different damages that have been 
incurred, the product and the, of this indemnization is not this resource is not going to leave Peru. Jaime Maussan said that this will be a resource for the construction of a scientific museum in Nazca, between, Naz between Nazca and Palpa in the Ica region. This is where the funds are going to be used for. It is not in order to get rich. This is none, none is doing this in order to get rich. And also the, the scientific this, will, this money will serve also to continue with the scientific observations and research. So we call attention to the authorities, ask them to please become part of this research, participate in this investigation. When you, the Ministry of Culture should be the first one uh, representing this, the emblem of research regarding this issue especially when we are dealing with a historical, universal situation. So upon ending this information, let's rescue, let's rescue these bodies so that they can also return to Peru. These bodies are in different parts of, some of these bodies are in different parts of the world, but they should return to Peru as well so that they be known to the rest of the world from Peru, private, and scientific institutions. UNESCO itself was asking, was part of this um, request to the government of Peru. So we are all, we must all have the courage as men and women to and participate in, as in my case, as an attorney, knowing the science and right, constitutional rights and penal rights, criminal rights. This is also our responsibility. I'm calling upon you that this is our responsibility to continue reaching the objective, to reach the truth. That's our main objective. Thank you very much for this. I'm sorry for the e events that we saw here about the inappropriate conduct of the employees of the Ministry of Culture, uh, we are the ones that are paying them. We are pay the ones that pay all these public functionaries, all these public employees. We are the ones paying them. We are the ones paying Congress. And they should be honorable. And, they, and their employees, their employers should be treated in a dignified manner. We are the employer, their employers. And therefore, they must respect us. But, but since dignity and honorability in this country is being lost in our country, somebody has to have the courage to stand up and claim this dignity not, so that the rights are not abused anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, we, ha we have heard the words of Dr. Rafael Angel Berrocal, a constitutional lawyer and doctor in political science uh, attorney. Finally, we will give the, the word, the podium to Mr. Jaime Mosan to give us the final conclusions of this press conference and also Mr. Joyce Mantilla. Mantilla. <coughs> Well, thank you very much for your patience. I just want to say that we are willing to reconcile with the government. Our response is the possibility of taking this body to uh, the universities and institutions of the highest level that have the sufficient equipment and specialists to research them. I have asked I have asked Dr. John McDowell if possible, please lead this investigation since he is of a scientist of the highest level at the world level. And therefore, I think that under his guidance, we can reach to the truth. 
undoubtedly he and other specialists will we finally be able to determine until we know after being with them after all they the bodies are legitimate as far as we know we are not seeing dolls assembled we are not seeing assembled dolls we do not find traces of them being altered three the possibility of them being humanoid beings was considered therefore perhaps conversion evolution as a possibility as well in other words we are in the beginning we are not in the end of this research and there's much to do much to do before concluding i believe that the demand I believe that the steps that have to be taken will allow uh, continue this case and take it to higher levels, to other levels. I'm not against the government of Peru, I'm not. I want to reconcile because this belongs to the inhabitants of Palpa and Nazca and the world. This has to be preserved. These bodies are being damaged daily. If we do not preserve them, they are going to disappear. It is necessary to recuperate more than the 100, 100 bodies of the original finding found in Peru and other parts of the world. Now they are in other parts of the world. And also perform all the necessary research to reach the conclusion. But we are going to, we are, we are not afraid, this is, we are not going to stop. I want the Ministry of Culture to listen to us. Until now, they have not accomplished, they cannot follow their own role. They should have. Further research is going to demonstrate this. Thank you very much. Uh, Joyce Mantilla is also asking forgiveness to the public that has been following this special transmission all over the world. Uh, we have found, we have shown uh, beautiful, uh, marvelous, interesting samples. They are all tridactyl bodies like Montserrat. How, how did she die? What, why was her last action? Her last, did she try to preserve her body because of how she held her arms in the position that she is? As I said before, the public ministry employees and ministry public and the ministry of culture interrupted this private event abruptly before that about 20 persons that suddenly came and left and the moment before because they thought that we were going to uh, show the mummies openly as a freak show or something and this was not like that of course so I invite my colleagues once again, please, to add yourselves to this investigation. I know there are other issues, polit political issues, there are thievery, there are things. But in this case, the uh, public ministry and the Ministry of Cultures, uh, they want to interrupt. They're more occupied in interrupting important research. We will continue in different programs. Jaime and myself, Jaime and I, are going to continue providing this information. I have been following these issues for a long time because of the, and, and many of my colleagues did not come because, because there was a political crisis. We will always have a, a new political crisis or something distracting us. But for some time, they, you should be able to focus on what can also be transcendental and important beyond, beyond the current uh, political corruption situation. <laughs> this situation will last far way beyond our lifetimes and that of our grandsons. I coincide with Jaime, this doesn't scare us away, this, will, this gives us more courage to face the truth. And all those that we need to face, we, we are sharing life with other species. We are not the only species. <laughs> Our ancestors admired us. 
in and they and they depicted them in uh, paintings, in rocks, in petroglyphs, in <coughs> tissue samples. They were painted. They painted their physiognomy, their anatomy. They tried to approach them in some way or other. So let's be, learn to live with this new reality. Thank you once again for coming to this transmission that has uh, happened live in Peru and other parts of the world. Thank you, Jaime, for supporting this investigation all the way from Mexico. If it hadn't been with the support of Gaia TV and Jaime Maussan, Tercer Milenio, uh, and Dr. McDowell, and all the guests that we have here, and Dr. Rodriguez as well, and others, people like them, people like David Ruiz, Dr. Salsed, Daniel, Dr. Zuniga, the people from the UNI University, University of Engineering in Lima, and the University of Andina of the of Cusco that are also approaching this investigation. All of you, all of them have made this possible. This is the work more suitable for scientists than reporters. So, so many scientists, more than 45, 50 scientists have been working on this already separately. And uh, they come from different places of the world. People have come from Japan, from France from different parts of the world, and they come to renew their knowledge of a new extraordinary finding. So, so we are not crazy. We are not crazy, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very real thing that has to be considered seriously. I thank you very much, Jaime, for this, for the support of this valuable patrimony of my country. Thank you very much for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, in the name of our organizers, Mr. Mausan and Joyce Mantilla, we thank all of you for coming here in this international to this international press conference where some of the studies, test researchers' results have been presented of these tridactyl beings from Nazca, Talpa. We invite you all to our coffee break in this um, Sheraton Hotel, Salon, next to the Precursores room, where we are now, in order to share among each other. Please, all of you, have a wonderful day. Does anybody want to make a question? We are beginning our press conference stage right now. They're requesting anybody that wants to ask a question. To please come to the podium to ask questions. With all the, all the press, all the members of the press, please can you handle him or her uh, microphone? Thank you. In brief, I would like to know what kind of level or meeting do you have with the authorities in the Ica region, in the Nazca, Palpa? Because we have been following this case from the beginning, basically, and you know that there are authorities that were supporting and were in, in agreement to work with you for this to be known and they had a very important tourist this this would be a very important tourist step to create a museum in this area in Nazca Palpa <coughs> this would be a great idea for the development of the area so do you have any conversation with authorities in this area Yes, we will. Ha we have had contacts with the uh, mayor of Nazca, with the current mayor and the previous one, <coughs> and um, 
there was a recent press conference also in which I was invited. Somebody else tried, the Ministry of Culture in Inca, they tried to boycott it. However, the mayor said, no, that should not happen, and we had the conference. It was a small uh, event in the municipal library, but once again, somebody tried to block it. Um, there are many things to talk about, for example, the security of the specimens. There isn't a direct participation yet, but there is interest. Uh, promoting a conversation, promoting uh, the cultural goods. They are interested. My name is Eduardo. Thank you very much for the invitation, of which, in which I am very uh, happy to be here. Two things I don't understand. First, they say that s people say that they have eggs, and others they have gestational um, bellies. I'm not a specialist, but there seems to be a contradiction there. Some have eggs, and others have um, embryos. I'm here as a friend. Please let me finish what I have to ask or say. Then we also they we are also being told that they are not manipulated, and there is a metal. Uh, what is the point of connection with what we are talking about, with with the Nazca iconography and with uh, ceramics, in which there are uh, beings that seem to have also three fingers. And are we also facing an evolutionary important event of different beings? Or could we add, according to some scientific opinions, the possibility that these beings had a different sensorial perception, different to ours, perhaps more refined, or um, did, do, did they have vocal cords and language or, or perhaps something different? This could be some of the questions. I'm not here to disqualify your work, but only to find some answers. First, first of all, the first question, there are about se there are seven species that we have identified, seven different. The little beings, the small beings, where we surprisingly found eggs, and uh, we think that they are further away from human beings. Uh, some have metals that were collected, were placed on their bodies while they were still alive. And there have been also some modified that they could have been modified uh, to make them look as tridactyls up post-mortem, but we have not found that <coughs> evidence of that manipulation. It's very obvious that experts will have to respond to this other question. I have been compiling uh, information, plenty of evidence regarding this issue. Not, not only from Peru, but now from Nazca, Paracas, Moche, these are other cultures in Peru, or the Wari culture, the Ica. And this, this iconography is not just found in Peru, but it's found all over the world. And from a very ancient a era until uh, soon before the Hispanics, uh, pre-Hispanic era. And uh, they are of the same era, these beings, but the representations are identical to those of reptilians, also those of r human humanoids, but more to reptilians. Why are why do people say that some beings have uh, eggs and others have placentas? Well, we, are, we would be speaking of those that resemble more reptiles than humans. Those are obipos. 
it's expected that they um, grew in the in the valley um, and now today there are only very few uh, beings with those characteristics there's a wari textile a wari culture textile that shows these uh, specific characteristics the, the opening the egg opening is uh, it's opening and it's uh, you can see the egg coming out in one of these iconographic representations all of this has to be compared with the beings and the, and the iconography all over the world please all reporters could you please give your name where you're coming from before the question yes i'm edgar palomino from El Observador. I have several questions in one. First, we know that these beings are reptilians, could be reptilians because of their endings, hands and feet. This could be one of the explanations. And also, for those that should know, why do you think the Ministry, public ministry and the Ministry of Culture have abruptly interrupted this uh, private e exposition. And what legal actions are you going to take after this inter interruption? Good afternoon. Yes, good. The question has been very concise. What can we do? What are we going to do? Well, first we are going to wait. We're going to give the state the opportunity through their employees to come to the first legal action that we have initiated in favor of a conciliation in order to reach an agreement in good terms. I know that this has been an arbitrary intervention in which uh, that cannot be justified positively again. It has been an interruption, a totally negative interruption that allows us to apply a judicial norm in which they can be banished but not with a penal uh, action, but with a civilian action or law. So, uh, this is the only way that we can uh, help them f find a better way of thinking regarding their activities, their action, because an, an employee, a public functionary can commit an error in the, in the end the highest, higher up will have to assume the mistake and this is why the president, the ministers should, must be persons that are specialists, true specialists in the work that they are performing in order to avoid such terrible mistakes as happened here. So we're going to wait for these 20 days in which the conciliation is over, conciliation period, and then we will execute the formal demand or lawsuit. Good afternoon. I'm Brenda Vallejo, Lujo de Tallos. I have heard that this project has taken place in different countries and different media outlets. Who is supporting you? Is, is there any government supporting you? What governments of the world has have rejected you or helped you and why? Why, why is this happening? Why would they be rejecting the support of these research regarding any government support. The only one that I've had has been the one in the Congress of Mexico that allowed me to present in a public hearing in the premises of the Congress two of these bodies that were taken by to, by Mex, to Mexico, not for me, by me, 
by, for, by another person. This is the only support that we have had. There's no support from any other government thus far. This is why, once again, we are requesting the government of Peru to support us in order to continue this investigation. If they came here with the intention of confiscating these bodies, then they are, in a way, recognizing their authenticity. So if uh, we ask them to help us take this to other places where they have all the resources to continue with this research adequately. But there is there's a trap here. There is, while the go government doesn't legally open this possibility, no foreign government will initiate some form of uh, official research. The a university of other places, if they don't have the authorization of the government of Peru, will not get involved. This is why it has been so difficult. In, in many parts, after we presented the bodies, why don't you take them to Oxford in England? Why don't you take them to Harvard? Why don't you take them to the Colorado University? Because no institution or university or decent university institution will allow a research if this is not authorized by the Ministry of Culture of Peru and by the government of Peru. And, and it is the Ministry of Culture of Peru precisely that, that has opposed the greatest resistance. The day after it was presented, the first report was presented by Gaia Television. The archaeologists were from Peru were telling, were saying that I had personally cut the fingers of the mummies, that I had personally created the mummies and this. For example, archaeologist Elsa Tomasto said that she would eat a, a live cockroach with mayonnaise if this if any of these uh, cases are true. And I'm not going to demand her to keep her promise. She should do it, but I'm not going to demand her to keep her promise. I'm not going to insist on that. We just want the government of Peru to authorize uh, the research on these bodies so that other institutions come also to ICA, to the University of ICA. We have physical evidence, and that is the most important thing. It can be touched, it can be researched, it can be sampled. And if it's like that, we can reach the truth. Thank you. I also have an interesting thing to say, because if the government, if the President Dina Boluarte has received uh, maybe she, she, she doesn't know infor information because an intermediary mid-level uh, employee filter, filters the information to her. Maybe she's not informed. The three letters telling her about uh, this uh, finding for a seventh year in a row we were we were asking through these letters, or these letters were asking her to take charge of this situation. But her personnel, the, the personnel of the president of Peru, seemed to interdict or uh, impede this, this information to reaching her. So we, we want uh, the defense, the public defense office, to to defend us and allow these letters to reach the proper authorities, the proper authority. We have the letters that have been returned. They are not interested in finding about this. And it seems like they're scared about this because this is physical evidence. This would change everything that we know about history, what archaeologists know, what many scientists think they know, or they opine from their homes, or from wherever they are sitting down. And they do not do what scientists should do, which is what, how, what Dr. Caruso, Dr. McDowell, Dr. William Rodriguez, and others do. They have come all the way here to make an independent scientific assessment research in order to eventually reach a conclusion. But our government, Peru, 
is not doing its proper job. And uh, unless they allow the bodies to be researched internationally, no other institutions are going to do it. Please, uh, don't uh, think, ladies and gentlemen, that the governments are going to tell the truth. Um, what they do is to uh, mount force, forces like those with the dolls that they did. My, Mi nombre es William Brown, soy de los Estados Unidos, del estado de Kansas. Soy un reportero independiente. Mi, mi pregunta es para el doctor McDowell. Si nos podría explicar el proceso ideal que, que podría proveer una línea de tiempo de cómo podría hacerse esta investigación que podría hacerse cómo podría ser revisado por pares esta investigación también. Le pido que resuma su pregunta. Si, puede pre si podría eh, resumir el proceso de revisión por pares de un caso así. Si les permitieran investigar los cuerpos, ¿cuál sería el proceso? una línea de tiempo de cómo podría proceder esta investigación. Muy buena pregunta. Todo lo que hacemos en la ciencia esperamos que sea revisado por pares. Los, los medios de comunicación han publicado papeles y deben ser también revisados por pares. Lo importante es pares, la palabra pares, personas que están en el mismo nivel de conocimiento que el nuestro y, y pueden trabajar con estas hipó hipótesis en la colección de datos, análisis de datos y evaluar las conclusiones que hemos llegado para que algo así sea revisado por pares, como si en tu, entendí tu pregunta bien. Primero hay que mostrar los, los hallazgos de los, eh, forma pública para que puedan ser criticados abiertamente. Eh, el tiempo será el tiempo que toma, que tome. Creo que el doctor McDowell lo ha resumido bien y luego de algunos resultados preliminares del ADN queremos eh, llevar a más laboratorios, dotarlos nuevamente con carbono, se tiene que repetir el dataje con el carbono 14. Esos son el tipo de cosas que estamos buscando. Las investigadoras actuales son muy preliminares. La, la verdad es que más se, se necesita más investigación. Se necesitan re responder más preguntas para poder este, saber los siguientes pasos. Uh, una pregunta para el doctor McDowell. ¿Usted estaría uh, dispuesto a continuar con esta investig investigación? ¿Vale la pena esta yeah. investigación? Sí. Okay. And you are willing to, to do, to coordinate this investigation? coordinar esta if, investigación? If sí. We have si es que, the agreement si es que of tenemos the el acuerdo del gobierno de Perú. Si es que mis colegas y otros this, individuos help que yo pueda uh, coordinar esto y ayudar earlier, a que se mueva. Peru, si no hubieran impedimentos del gobierno de Perú so o del Ministerio de Perú, yo no quiero crear una, un ambiente de división, so, uh, sino un ambiente de colaboración. Any, uh, Entonces, sí, estaría... Okay. I, I agree. Um, more research is needed. Um, it should be done in an open and free environment with exchange of ideas. That's what science is. 
investigaciones de forma abierta, sí. intercambiando ideas abiertamente, eso es lo que la ciencia es. Just to reiterate, yes, uh, uh, it indeed requires more in-depth scientific studies in order to come to a conclusion, and it needs to be looked at by other scientists too to review whatever work, but we would certainly be willing to take the task on to continue this work at a very high level uh, and, and in mo much more detail to uh, make a determination as to what exactly uh, we are looking at. Hola, hola. Hola, ¿se escucha? Hola, uno, dos. Adelante, por favor. Muy buenas tardes con todos. Mi nombre es Edwin Cabello, soy periodista del portal de investigación Lima Madrid. Y lo que quería mencionar primero es un recuerdo del episodio que pasó hoy con la intervención de la Fiscalía y la Policía. Cuando se descubre las tumbas del señor Recipán, asesina a una persona que es Hermil Bernal, el verdadero descubridor, un guapán. Sipan, uh, Lord, was discovered in uh, an archaeological find in the north of Peru. Also, the founder, the finder, the person that found this, Lord of Sipan, was killed. And there was, his family never found justice about this. What is happening today, also, the Peruvian government, through, according to my opinion, is that what, what the Ministry of Culture wants to do is to negate what uh, uh, vaqueros or tomb uh, finders, robbers, uh, found, rather than them. Maybe that's what they're trying to do, in my opinion. Well, yes, on, on the one hand, it's unfortunately that it was found by vaqueros or persons that or tomb raiders, raiders, but in this case, I think that Mr. Leandro was just seeking for gold, and he found these beings by chance. Um, it, it would have been unfortunate because if an, if an archaeologist had found this, we would already be in our moving forward in another level. So I believe that we must overcome that moment, we must reconcile between ourselves, among ourselves, and be with archaeologists and scientists in Peru, we would like them to take this case into their hands. The scientists of Peru, this be doesn't belong to reporters, this belongs to scientists. And hopefully, I we will be able to reconcile due to the gravity and importance of this discovery. Please, it could be one of the most important findings in the history of humanity. How could it be that Peruvians themselves want to destroy a treasure? It's their treasure. Just think on it, think on it, what it means for your country what this could give to the inhabitants of Palpa and Nazca. Why deny this due to ego, why to je uh, for reason, uh, jealousy, ba banal, re banal reasons? Why? This belongs to Peru. As uh, attorney Berrocal said, you are the ones paying those public employees, and they owe to you. And therefore, this discord should be overcome, and some kind of agreement should be reached in order to work with the international team of scientists. They want to know. They, they're intrigued. They do not want to reach conclusions too fast, too soon. We understand that the research was too short for now, but they're willing to continue, so there must be something valuable to research here that the bodies are worth studying if they had not found something uh, uh, agreeable to them. I'm sure that they would not even be here. But they have seen that there are the, there's the basis to continue the research, and it's worth it. We must study. It is correct. And I believe that we must begin to reconcile ourselves with science. I'm open to open with the government of Peru. What I want is to reach a common good, and also for the good and with the good of the inhabitants of Nazca and Palpa. Isn't this worthy? Yes, it is. 
we need to find answers of all these mysteries of the past. If we consider for one moment that these beings were very intelligent and they were responsible of some of the most important uh, developments that remain still in mystery, mystery, for example, the aqueducts, aqueducts in Nazca and other things beyond the, the geoglyphs and figures in Nazca, there are extraordinary things. Who made them? And then all of a sudden, these bodies appear, appeared in that area. Come on. This is a very important thing that should elicit lots of curiosity in us. So I'm making a call to Peruvians to defend that which is theirs and not allow the Ministry of Culture of Peru, which is manipulated by interests outside of science, don't allow them to capture these bodies and destroy them. Because this is what, why they came. They came to take them away. They came to take them away, to cut them in pieces, like they did the dolls, like they did this, with this replica, with these dolls that were assembled. Here is, even among us, is the artisan that built the replicas, the dolls, and he even called the Ministry of Culture that were they confiscated these dolls and told them, this I made, I made these dolls, these are all false because I made them. But the ministry presented the scientists and said, oh, therefore, we have these, and therefore all, all of the mummies are fake. That cannot be, that is wrong. My name is Jonathan Sonko, I'm from America Television. This is a personal uh, question for the, uh, Mr. Maussan and Man Mantilla. A moment ago, Mr. Mantilla said that for these discoveries to be taken advantage in the best way possible, they would have to be taken to international universities abroad, to the best universities abroad. My question uh, is about the following. If we know that the Peruvian state, the Ministry of Culture, is just blocking this research and making it difficult. If we, if we, if they are doing that since the beginning, most probably it's because for some weird criteria, criteria they don't want to allow this to become known. So what would be the next steps, the rightful steps to do? If we, if we know that we are swimming against the the ocean, the, the stream, what can be done differently if they're blocking this? What proceeds is what we are doing. There is a demand. This demand, this lawsuit has to be uh, answered. I know that there's going to, I'm certain that there's going to be a conciliatory process. And in this process, one of the conditions is to continue with the research. This is the process, to recuperate all the bodies that are in any part of the world. How? Uh, with the participation of the person that discovered them, who knows where many bodies are. Also, research to ask the, body, the government of Peru to recognize that they made a mistake, that the bodies that they were, that they were, they were researching were not the genuine ones, not the original ones. And to do this, open the borders of Peru so that, so that they can be researched in other places and return, and return to Peru. And if the scientists on an international level decide that these are new species, non-human, that they may be from another place from the cosmos, or whatever they are, we will have a true answer. And then we must also protect these bodies, avoid them from uh, damaging, being damaged by the environment. They must be placed in special uh, containers with a proper climatization. And then we must come, then a, a high level museum will be used in the benefit of Peru, of its inhabitants, creating a high-level modern museum. This is what proceeds. This is what we want. So we're very thankful 
here to Mr. Dr. John McDowell, Jim Caruso, and Dr. William Rodriguez, which are of the highest levels. Their careers are filled with recognitions and awards. Dr. McDowell just received the highest available award in forensic science, sciences, and he's here with us. He's here with us. He's interested in this. So people from the Ministry of Culture should, Culture should want to be here and listen to him. For the time being, maybe they, they, they will not say much. The scientists came here to Peru because they only researched this for a couple of days. But the seed of curiosity was planted in them, and they want to know more. For me, that is enough. For me, that is that means that this journey to Peru was a success. Was a success. For me, this was a success. We are not going to weaken. We are going to continue. And with the help of attorney Berrocal, Rafael Berrocal, we are going to continue on this. Hopefully not more, t not long will take, not long a time will take. We are going to sensibilize, sensibilize what the authorities have in their hands. Maybe they, they don't even know. Maybe they're not even informed truthfully about what is happening. Thank you, Jaime. And truly, I coincide with Jaime. Uh, they do not realize what we have here. The, the, the eye doesn't see what the mind doesn't know. And this applies to this case. It's like they don't have the capacity to see the great importance of this finding. It can be considered in a very short, short time period of time one of the most important historical findings that already, already happened in Peru, already happened in Nazca, an enigmatic, emblematic region in Peru. Whether our scientists came here or not, the finding was here in Peru, in this emblematic region of the Nazca culture. And be, 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 besides, something came out of the ground of the Nazca palpa culture coming like this as a gift for them and the world. They should recognize it. Good afternoon. I'm also part of a Japanese press. My, my name is Ifei Tanaka. I know that this is within studies process, a process of studies. But what humanites though do those humanoid beings have with the pre-Hispanic, pre pre-Inca beings, uh, the Nazca people, as a hypothesis. Is there a probability where were they rivals? Or were they, were they friends, where they had a friendly relation? And who came into this tomb where the mummies were found. We spoke very little about the iconography, but we have the theory, a working theory, that, of course, anthropologists should be here. This is why the dean of the anthropologists in Peru are, is here with us. We have the theory, the hypothesis, that they live together with this species, that they adored them that they are registered in art, iconography. You do not uh, record their, your enemies. You, you record, you draw your, uh, the, those beings that you admire, like we do with uh, coins and bills. We put uh, our heroes there to remember them. So we think that at least they live together for a, at least for about 1,100 years because Maria, which is, who is in the University of Ica, has uh, for 1,800 to 2,000 years. And the most recent one is about 750, 850 years old. So 
they 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 this seems that they, to point to the fact that they lived with the uh, ancient Nazca people for a long time, longer than the Moors lived in Spain. The question is, how did they live? Why were they buried there? How? Why did they die? What happened to this woman that was pregnant? Was she was a youngster? She had like a, an emblem of gold on her forehead. Why? Why would that be? Why other? The other one has a metal with uh, letters or something like that in the back of the neck. What was the, the interaction among them? Why? All of them were tridactyls. All of them. All the seven species were tridactyl. Did they come together? Why is there no before evolutionarily wise? Did they appear suddenly? Why don't they have any, do they have any descendants? Is this a, a conversion of evolution? Or what? This is a fascinating field if we know how to exploit it. From the finding of the bodies, what comes next is continued decade after decade, perhaps hundreds of years to continue discovering what happened and who, uh, how they are related with us and with uh, the Puma Pulco ruins or Tiahuanacu or the other ruins that are very mysterious of Sacsayhuaman in Cusco, the Nazca lines. What is the relationship with so many things? A, a mental space opens up. It's a big possibility for the growth of humanity, of understanding. This is why we are involved. This is why we do not want to uh, concede, uh, even if institutions uh, are trying to scare us. No matter what they do, we are going to continue until the end. We promise this to you, and we are going to make it. And hopefully until the end, this the only winner in, for this event will be the truth, hopefully. And also for our children, we will find the truth. Thank you, Joy Mantilla and, and uh, Jaime Maussan, our host in this press conference of the Triductal Mummies of Bodies of Nazca. We give thanks to all the professionals that have come here. And also, thank you for their assistance. We invite you now to a coffee break in the salon of this hotel. Have a wonderful day.